Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. My be I need to brush this. This is... I might need to actually trim a little bit because it's starting to do weird things. Uh, today, on the show... It's a show, right? On this episode... <laughs> I'm going to make some panels to paint on. I, uh, I figured out, actually, this is going in a way back machine. This is the reason I got into making things out of wood was that I got tired of uh, paying too much money for things to make art on by buying like pre-wrapped canvases at the store. So I said I could just make panels out of like one by twos and thin plywood on top and paint those. So I started doing that. I bought a chop saw and started making those. And uh, that's what got me into this whole rigmarole. <laughs> Who uses the term rigmarole? <laughs> uh, so we're going to make some focus. Thank you. Uh, we're going to make some painting panels. I got a garden tour that I'm participating in this weekend. I'm painting in somebody's backyard garden as part of a city uh, tour thing. They send buses of people around to look at gardens and watch people paint in gardens. And I'm in that. So I got to make some panels to paint on. So let's get uh, cutting up some one by 2 and skinning it with 8th inch mahogany door skin stuff as I do to paint on. I'll show you how to do that. Save you a ton of money if you're an artist. Let's go. So I didn't actually have any one by two and I didn't feel like going to the store to get any so I found a piece of material up on the shelf that I could make one by two essentially one by two out of uh, so this is about three quarters of an inch wide by um, about an inch and a half wide but deep whatever it, I made one by two so let's just leave it at that uh, and I started by cutting the, I measured it out and they were about um, almost four feet long not quite, so I made three by three panel out of this one. I cut about nine inches or so off the end to get it down to three feet. I guess it was three feet and nine inches. Um, and then I cut the nine inch part off and I made the little supports for the corners that you'll see why you need those in a couple of minutes. These ones are not important in terms of being precise or all the same uh, length or anything because they are literally just support braces. These ones do in fact need to be exactly the same. Uh, so I cut them all at the same time, lined up the end and ran them all through at the same time. After I got my blade at exactly 45 degrees and my miter slid at exactly 90 degrees. Those two things are very important uh, in order for this to come together tightly. And then I just glued the opposing corners together what I do is I put glue in the joint and then I use my staple gun and just staple it shut and let it cure up. Uh, once you glue a panel of plywood to it, it is more than plenty strong. Uh, and then here's me fighting to get a piece of... <coughs> I forgot about that. I uh, recorded myself bringing it into the shop. That's hilarious. Um, this is eighth inch uh, mahogany they call it door skin in some places. It's uh, this is what they use for hollow board doors or something. I don't, otherwise, I don't know why they call it that. Uh, but yeah, it's just eighth inch ply. Um, it's got a good side on one side, so that's the side that you use to paint on. Uh, I marked out the frame and then I put uh, some painter's tape down just to try and keep it from blowing out a little bit. I use my jigsaw, obviously, as you can see there, to cut it out because I just I cannot wield a piece that big uh, over my table saw by myself, and so I just cut it down with the jigsaw, and then yeah, glue and clamp it all the way around. I couldn't figure out how to actually clamp it all the way around, so I clamped on two sides and then just weighted the rest of it down uh, with a bunch of heavy scraps and stuff. But and then I left one side a little bit proud was I when I was gluing it just so that I could flush it up. Uh, was it, yeah, it might have been more than one side. Let's say it was just one side though. <laughs> anyway, leave it proud and trim it down. Don't uh, cut it to exact length. And then, yeah, give it a sanding. 
I think I only sand to maybe 150. Maybe I do 80, 150 on these things. Uh, maybe I just go to 80. I'm gonna prime it and paint it anyway, so uh, as long as it's smoothish, you're good to go. And then I just used, uh, for this one, I just used regular household primer. I didn't buy fancy, uh, like, art gesso or anything. Because, you know, if you're trying to save money, save money, right? And there you go. That's my setup out in the yard that day with my new panel. All right, so I didn't get my painting done because it was just an afternoon in the garden. But if you want, if you paint things on canvases and uh, that kind of, if you're a, a fine artist, if you're a painter type person, make your own things. Because this three foot by three foot uh, canvas cost me, I don't know, maybe 15 bucks to make. And it probably would have cost me like $100 or more in the art store to get stretch canvas over a frame that's over an inch deep. So there you go. Bye. Buy some thin plywood and some one by twos. Make yourself some stuff to paint on if you paint things. Thanks for watching. See you next time. It's all right, eh? I think it's okay. It's a good start, anyway. Get the pond and the rocks and the planters and the, they're gonna have, eventually I'm gonna have some actual plants in there instead of just a mess of texture. But yeah, that's kind of my style. I do sort of abstracty, impressionisty kind of stuff. But there you go. That's the start of my garden painting that I did today on a $15-ish panel instead of a hundred plus dollar canvas. Thanks. See you next time. Bye for now. Alright. I I gotta go put this someplace so I know to finish it later or else it'll just get left and I'll never finish it and that would be bad that'd be a waste of that 15 bucks <laughs>